Hello, everybody. Welcome to School to Supernatural from my home again, so lockdown down with coronavirus. And the message I want to share, I've actually taped it twice. Uh, you may see me sit down on my deck, and one of them, the audio went out part way. The other one, the audio did not work at all. I've had to order a new microphone, so I'm just using my laptop right now. But I want you to get the message. I'll tell it, sewing into the anointing, uh, number two. And so let's go to 1 Kings 17. Uh, this is a revelation I want you to get. Once I got this revelation years ago, the financial blessings began to come upon me. Though I'd worked years and years in total obedience to what God's word said, returned my tithes to God from the very first paycheck when I came to God as a 30-year-old adult, to this day and offering and back and everything, for years I struggled financially, even even though I was returned my tithes, uh, given offering, until I came into this revelation. And remember something I teach you over and over, that we meditate in our head, our meditation, uh, biblical meditation like Joshua 1, meditate on the Word of God day and night, don't let it depart from your mouth. So it's not just reading it, think about it, speaking it, but then it goes to your heart. It, that's revelation. It goes from uh, meditation to revelation. Jesus said, out of the innermost, uh, your innermost being shall flow rivers of living water. Amen. And then when it goes to revelation, it begins to manifest. And I had the head knowledge how to do things right, how to return tithes correctly, give offering, uh, et cetera. But I never had the revelation I'm going to share with you today. And once I got that revelation, it released the blessings of God in my life. So 1 Kings chapter 17, <clears throat> verse 8 to begin with. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, Arise, go to Zerathath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there and see I have commanded a widow there to provide you. So he arose and went to Zerathath. And when he came to the gate of the city, indeed a widow was there gathering sticks. He called her and said, please bring me a little cup of water that I may drink. <clears throat> Verse 11, and as she was going to get it, he called her and said, please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. So she said, as the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin, a little oil in a jar, and see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. Verse 13, and Elijah said to her, do not fear. Go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake of it first and bring it to me. And afterward, make some for yourself and your son. For thus said the Lord God of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain upon the earth. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah, and she and he and her household ate for many days. <clears throat> the bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. And so it's interesting that both Elijah and her and her household, no tell how many family members ate from that. But see, she received the word of God from the prophet. And I have uh, uh, videos on my YouTube on return of the word. That's what happened. The man of God heard the word, but it would not have happened had he not spoke to it. Uh, just like uh, Ezekiel 37, the Valley of Dry Bones. Uh, God told Ezekiel what to say, but nothing happened until the man of God spoke it. And <clears throat> it began to happen. So this woman received that word. And uh, I've seen many people I've prophesied to over the years, uh, great, great things happen in their life, uh, powerful prophecies, et cetera. But I've also seen people receive the same kind of pure word of God, but because they did not surrender to it, maybe they had a bad attitude towards the church, the pastor uh, was upset with people, they, they actually cursed that prophecy and never came to pass. And a lot of people don't understand that. So now maybe in the same breath almost, we'll speak a word and we'll speak another word. And one of them happens and the other one looks like it didn't happen. The prophet didn't miss it. God didn't miss it. The person did not surrender to the word of God. So this lady obeyed the word of God. She went 
he did what the man of God said. And it's almost like at first, you think it's horrible, that prophet, he's wanting their, their, their uh, last cake, their water, etc. But it's almost like a type of a tithe that she gave to him. And then it began to multiply. And we're talking about sowing into anointing. I want you to know that Elijah did not need that widow lady. She did, he did not need her at all. Uh, she needed him. She needed anointing to sow into. Praise God. And we, we have to understand this, that, that the ground we sow into makes a big difference. Uh, I could go out into a concrete parking lot and sow seed in the middle of winter in upstate New York, and nothing's going to happen. But if I find some good ground out there and sow it in good ground in season, the right season, it comes forth. I got plants out there. I just looked at them a couple minutes ago. Amen. They're in their, their little juvenile stage, but I'm waiting for big things to come from it. And let me say this. Many people give to the work of God, and they make a statement. It's a religious statement. They don't realize it. They heard some religious person say it, and so they repeat it. But they don't realize as they repeat it, they're cursing their blessing. And they'll say, oh, I, I gave, but I don't expect anything back. I do. That's not my motive for giving. I would give no matter what. But the word of God says, whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Praise God. And so we have sowed it. And, and we're going to reap it. Uh, those plants out there, I go out day after day watching them. But anytime I've ever planted seed over the years, I keep looking. I see a little sprout come up. I check the next day. But I, I don't go out, prepare a garden, and get the grass and weeds out of it, get the ground ready, and fertilize it, and, and plant a plant or seed, uh, seed or a little plant, and, and say, well, I don't expect to have any fruit or no tomatoes. Or I even got me some Thai chili peppers out there. You know, I like to cook Thai food. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> And I'll uh, eat too much Thai food, start turning into thighs. Just kidding. Okay. But <laughs> anyway, I, I enjoy myself. You have to excuse me. But the thing is, I expect it to grow. Because the word of God said, whatever a man sows, uh, that shall he reap. It's going to come up, and uh, good or bad. But when we speak to, against the word of God, oh, I don't expect anything. We've actually cursed what God said. And we kill that blessing. We kill that prophetic word. Praise God. I've had people right here that, that uh, were bearing friends of my wife and I come walking back in the sanctuary. I see in the spirit a baby in the womb. I stop her. I prophesy. I've shared this on other CDs. Uh, I prophesy uh, you're going to have a child. She believed the word, went home, prepared a baby's room, bought cribs, bought all this stuff for a baby's room, and now she has two children. Hallelujah. She received that word, but that same word could have left my mouth from God. And she could have said, oh, I don't believe this. I don't think this is going to happen. Uh, if, if I see any signs are going to happen, I'll, I'll do something. No, she stepped out by faith and did as she believed. Amen. Praise God. The apostle Paul said, I believed, therefore I spoke. Praise God. So in Matthew chapter 10, Verse 7 and 8, Jesus said, As you go preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. <clears throat> he said, As you go preach or proclaim, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. What do I do when I do that? I literally bring heaven down. Many people don't understand this, but God did not put Adam and Eve on earth. In the Garden of Eden, which is a type of heaven, the glory of God, had they not sinned, they would live on and on in that uh, perpetual place. He did not put them on earth to go to heaven. He put them on earth to bring heaven to earth. That's why in the Lord's Prayer, uh, you'll read in Matthew 6, verse 8, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So back to Matthew 10, when I decree the kingdom of heaven is near, I, you're feeling my meetings and I'm, if I, something like settles down. It's like this big piece of land, suddenly it's heaven. That's why we have so many angels in our ministry. Uh, that, that's why we have so many miracles going on, because we bring heaven to earth, and we operate in that glory realm. 
had Adam and Eve not sinned, which they did, but had they not sinned, they would increase their family, increase their garden, which is a type of the glory of God, and the glory of God filled the whole earth. Hallelujah. And so years ago, I felt very uncomfortable asking to receive an offer and receiving a blessing from people. And you have to learn uh, that you have to learn how to receive a blessing. A lot of times you'll block your reaping because you don't know how to receive it with thankfulness and thanksgiving. But I feel awkward. But once I got this revelation that I just shared with you from 2 Kings about Elijah, the man of God, that he did not need the widow. The widow needed him. Amen. When I receive an offering, I, I'm, I'm bringing anointing to the table that they, they can sow into. And there's only one, the anointed one. His name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. <clears throat> but yet the anointing I carry and other men of God carry is from the anointed one. And so you want to find good ground. We have a saying here that when you sow here, it goes there. And it goes fast. Uh, I can reference many of the men of God and women of God I work with overseas that when we have some we can sow. Just recently we, we helped during this a virus deal, lockdown in nations, including our nation. Uh, we bought food in India, Vietnam, Philippines, uh, we, uh, twice in Philippines, uh, twice in India, uh, in uh, Pakistan, in Kenya, Africa. Uh, just only a few days ago, I found two pastors in two different nations were running out of food for them and their family. Uh, I was able to send a little bit. We didn't have a large amount, but I sent what I could. But only we've been sowing and sowing. So we, we put it out there. We, we use it to travel all over the world also. Uh, I just returned recently my 39th missionary trip. And, and uh, praise God, God blessed us in a mighty way. There's nothing impossible to God. So let's go to, um, I'm just going to read it for you. I quoted a while ago, 2 Corinthians 9, verse 10. Uh, he, now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food, supply and multiply the seed you have sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Now there's one part I have not shared yet. Uh, he supplies seed to the sower. This is very important. A lot of people say, man, I wish I had something to give. No problem. If you really are going to give in the work of God, in the good ground, uh, whether you're sending yourself overseas or whether you send it through a ministry, uh, whatever, but you're going to sow it, whatever is needed, wherever it is, whether even in your own city, uh, but you're really going to sow it. The Bible said God gives seed to the sower. <clears throat> for years and years, uh, for decades, I've been ordained under Pastor Rod Parsley, Columbus, Ohio. It's now called a, uh, a City Harvest uh, Fellowship. It used to call World Harvest Fellowship. And, and uh, each year, for many years, uh, my wife and I would sow in Resurrection Sunday, we sow most most times a whole week of salary, of, of pay. We sow it because we want to give our best gift on that day to the work of God. And our pastor was blessed over 20-some years. God gave him that revelation. So he carries a very special anointing. Us ordained under him also carry a powerful anointing on that. And, and one year, all of a sudden, uh, I was just scheduled to go overseas. Uh, we had no extra money. We had no seed to sow. But one day, my wife went to the computer room, and she found an envelope. She's worked for two different banks in the same location. They changed companies, and they, they were always sending envelopes and updates, and she never opened it. And that day, she went and opened an envelope, and it had a nice-sized check. Immediately, we had our seed to sow. We sold a week's uh, pay uh, into the work of God. I went into the Philippines, and a Chinese lady, lady I never met walked up to me and said, Pastor, I want to give you this wallet. It was in a little uh, cardboard box, had a drawer, slide out, slid out, very nice leather, beautiful. I said, oh, thank you. It's very beautiful. I get ready to lay on the, the, the seat of the van I was in, get ready to go back to another city. And she said, no, no, put that in your suitcase. I didn't know why. I said, okay. I put it in my suitcase. Four months after I was home, I told my wife, is it my old wallet? You know, I reached my man, it's wearing out. You know where that new wallet that lady gave me? She said, oh, yeah, I know where it is. She come walk down the hall and said, oh, my goodness. She opened it up. It had 12 $100 U.S. bills and $344 worth of Filipino pesos, which I went and cashed into the bank. I found the bank that will cash it. I went right at it. 
So $1,544 was in my hand. Praise God. And, and so equipped us to continue to sow. And so it's very exciting what, what God does. When I got, many of you know, I drive, I have a Harley soft tail. I drive, uh, my wife and I was just out up through the mountains yesterday in the beautiful weather we're having and maybe on again before the rain gets here today. I don't know. And uh, we're having our late life crisis, I tell people. Oh, we love to ride around, enjoy ourselves. But the thing is, when I got ready to buy a couple years ago, I look at the, I want to buy a used big Harley. I look at the yard sales, I won't add digest. And everyone at the beginning of that summer was selling $1,500 over retail. So I kept backing away, backing away. And then finally on Thursday night, uh, I, I was in contact with a, a ministry and God led me to sow a big seed into that ministry uh, that, that night over the phone. The next day after I wake up, I opened up the garage sales on Facebook and there it is, a 2011 Harley Softail with only 4,700 uh, miles on, not 1,000, 4,700 miles. Now he broke in good for $2,200 under retail. And that's one I own today. God bless me. I sowed a seed. I sowed into anointing in faith. Praise God. And, and God bless me. We're still driving to Harley. And so sowing into good ground works. Uh, let's go to Galatians 6, verse 7 a moment. I'll read it to you. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. And that's very, very powerful. When we bought our church property uh, over about two and a half, three years ago, I lose track of time. Uh, God led me, uh, to, told me to quit local pastoring, focus on international evangelism, going to U.S. churches, uh, uh, work at a supernatural science, wonders, and miracles. Most you know that over nine years now, uh, for uh, over nine years, 98% of uh, when I preach healing in a church, 98% of everyone plus, so that's all actually 100% plus that comes up for healing receives an instant miracle. Uh, when I was on Sid Roth, you can see it on my website, it's riverlifeworldmission.com. You click on the Sid Roth deal. When I was on there, we had 90% healed, but the uh, the 90% 50 was instant miracles. So now we pray for a big cancer, go down our hands like that many times. But other times we pray, it looked like nothing happened, but in two weeks it'd be gone. They're, they're healed. But yet for over nine years, we've had 90% plus instant miracles, blind eyes, cancers, instantly disappear, deaf ears pop open, cripples walk. Amen. <clears throat> and so God, God increased it. But when we we're getting ready to buy this property, we looked at it for a couple of years, driving by it and checked on it. And uh, finally, I, I, I was at a, a prophetic conference in Annapolis, Maryland. Uh, a, a young prophet, I'll say his name, Martin Bustard, had heard from him for years, but a great, great man of God. Uh, he'll kind of after sir, he'll glance at your eyes and look down. He said, Pastor, what you're struggling with in your city will totally change around the first part of January. He said, Your ministry is going to totally change also. And I received that word. We're in a little storefront with a handful of people. I leaned over to Pope and I said, we're praying for $50,000. That's what I felt to pray for. We began to pray. We'd have late night prayer meetings, all night prayer meetings many times. And uh, prayer is something that is kind of lacking in churches nowadays. You have a lot of entertainment, very little prayer. I had somebody walk up to me a while back and ask me, where's the prayer room? I said, they don't have one. Amen. <laughs> and and uh, it's not the top thing now. But the thing is, I told my real estate lady, uh, I said, uh, we're going to make this offer. And I offered $50,000 less, in faith, $50,000 less than what the, la the lady was asking for it. And she got angry through a real estate agent and said, no way, tell the people, absolutely not. I, I felt so. I told my real estate lady, I said, keep, keep the binder in. Leave the binder in. We had a $500 binder, offered 50000 under what she wanted. And one week later, seven days, God's number seven, the lady came back through her real estate agent and my agent and said, that church wants it. I'm going to sell it to them. And she so offered to sell it to us 50000 under what we offered, which was $100,000 less than, than, than she was wanting for it. And God made a way. <clears throat> then we began to repair and do things. We needed a septic system. And uh, I was perking. Uh, 
They had some trees up a little bit on the side where I'm at right now. I was perking in a real high number. It's like a percolator coffee pot. The faster it goes down, uh, the, the smaller system you need to pay for. But it goes real slow. You need a huge above ground system. And I was perking. It's raining that day. I'm out there by myself digging holes. I literally reached into the mud, lay my hands, and prayed in Jesus' name, let, let this ground start perking right. And, and suddenly an elderly man walked up behind me. He was a real man. He was not an angel. He said, Pastor, what are you doing? I said, I'm trying to get a good perk. He pointed behind him. He said, don't you know about that bank run gravel out there? I said, no. And I had a saw uh, map on this property looking at it. He said, yes, and I went there. I had less than a three-minute perk. I couldn't even run the water back before it was all gone. Amen. And when the health man came out, his name was Gary, to inspect, he's a Christian. He said, Pastor, where did the run gravel come from? They said, I've been there a long time, grass on it, clay and everything on top. I said, I don't know, Gary. My only guess, maybe uh, at the end of the flood, God looked down thousands of years and see me out there praying in the, the mud holes and said, I better put a little bank run gravel that past that man, man's wild. <laughs> I don't know. That's just my guess. That's Cardinal 3 and 8. That's my guess. And so the thing is, uh, we were able to get a, a in-ground system. And so God bless it. So God works things out. And uh, so uh, we buy the church property. God blesses with it. He blesses many, many. I want to try to go into all of them. Uh, uh, blessings, uh, getting ready for the property, open doors, financial blessings. Uh, I could go probably 30 minutes, li listen to them. But one time I was up, uh, I was at a, a church in upstate New York. They invited me to go preach. I won't name the city. <clears throat> the pastor that had been there for years just left in deep moral sin, just left the church. The new pastor took over. I went there to preach in the church building and the property was in foreclosure. Get, just get ready to foreclose on the property. The pastor left an left old beat up car for the new pastor. It wouldn't hardly run. I mean, horrible condition. And, and um, <clears throat> uh, when I met you that day, I preached. And at the end of it, I stood in the pulpit and I commanded the spirit of poverty to break off of that. And to, it would open financial blessings up. And a man in his church had been uh, already been negotiating with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, whatever it is to put water wells in for the U.S. government. He's in that business. He'd been negotiating a long time. And suddenly only just a week or so later, it opened up. He got the contract. Instantly, he was a multimillionaire. He paid the church all completely cash. He bought the pastor a brand new uh, Lexus. He bought the pastor wife. I can't remember what kind of car he bought her, a brand new car. And God opened the door. I've seen this over and over and over again. Even before I had the revelation I'm sharing with you today, and remember the, the ministry you so into makes a big difference. And uh, we're part of a local assembly, King's Fire right here. Uh, we're faithful. And so the moment I, I stopped local passion, I immediately connected. Every Sunday we're faithful there, except lockdown right now, we're faithful on the video with them. Uh, uh, if I'm gone, the pastor knows where I'm at. Uh, we're overseas. We're in a, another uh, city preaching the gospel, the supernatural. We've turned ties and offering. We're backing them in prayer. We're there behind them. Praise God. And so I believe in, I believe in that. But yet we also sold to many other ministries. I just shared a while ago about the nations we sold into. Uh, we, we've been on 39, I've been on 39 mission trips. And our mission trips, we go in sometimes where they never heard the name of Jesus one time. I've been villages in Cambodia, stand up, a thousand Buddhists around me. I say, Buddha, no God, Jesus is God. And after a short message, I say, I'll show you my God right now. And I commanded uh, that day, and 120 was instantly healed. And my wife and I went out, and another 400 and something was healed. That's before we worked in the power we're working in now. And that day, we baptized 680 in a lake right next to the village because they saw a demonstration. The Apostle Paul said, don't let my preaching be the enticing words of man's wisdom, but let it be a demonstration of the power of the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. And so uh, we're, uh, we've seen now over 12,000 people healed. That's very conservative. 39 mission trips all over. Uh, uh, we help orphans. Uh, we support a rescue sex lady through Rescue One, Matt Soger on Long Island's ministry, very 
friend of mine, very trusted minister, and, and uh, we fully support a rescued sex slave uh, that they have in one of their places in the Philippines, the full support of that child uh, uh, each month for a long time. Uh, we have orphans we help, uh, City of Harvest, uh, through my pastor, Rod Parsley. Uh, we've uh, been raising funds for food. I have other needs right now. We're, people are asking if we, we need some help here. They're hungry. I said, we pray that somebody gives. And I realize America, a lot of people are out of work right now. We understand. But I tell them, when God gives it, you'll get it. You, you sow here, it goes there in a hurry. Praise God. Amen. I won't be eating a steak on it or a big hamburger on it. I guarantee you. In fact, just recently when we started raising funds for people in India, I put on Facebook, we offered a match of first $1,000 donated dollar for dollar out, out of our own funds, our mission funds. And we did that. We've, we've sent several thousand dollars out to help already. Praise God. But we're very serious about this. And that's why we're blessed so much. We have a revelation that we're, people are sowing in this anointing. We're passing on and we're sowing into anointing. Uh, uh, we're, we're involved, uh, we, we support CBN for many years, uh, praise God. Uh, we have other ministries uh, we help support in the work of God. Uh, we have evangelism, some Asian nations that every month we're supporting the man and woman of God and, and their needs to keep bringing the gospel out. And I'm talking about people on fire for God, doing the work of God, hallelujah. Amen, I've had people in, in countries like Cambodia Say, Pastor, you give me $30 a, a month, I'll go out and start a church in such such village. I'm not going to give them one dollar. If they, they, they don't have that heart to preach, you go preach where they get. Most of the time, I've paid to go preach. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. If they don't have the heart to go preach and they don't get paid, uh, they're going to be nothing but a hireling. They're, they're not going to have their heart to work. I'm not supporting that. Now, if I find someone really blessed, we have one pastor there to bless a nice building, a uh, orphanage, uh, school, uh, first aid area, and, and I mean, really blessed. And one time, uh, one of my translators saw me right before I got ready to leave after preach for him. I put a hundred dollar bill out and gave it to him. My translator come, he said, hey, don't, don't give him nothing. He, he's got a lot of people. He got a lot of blessings. I said, that's why I'm sowing into him because he's blessed. He's anointed. He's blessed. You can sow into someone that doesn't have anything. And, and a few days later, they're not going to have anything again. Amen. I want someone to go out and do the work of God, anoint it, go preach the gospel. And so we're sowers and, and we give. Uh, our website again is River of Life World Mission Singular.com. River of Life World Mission.com. Uh, you click on there, the YouTube uh, Supernatural Faith videos. You click on there, bring it right to my YouTube site. About 27, 28 videos on there right now. Powerful things on angels, translating, transporting the supernatural, uh, about everything you can think about. There's more coming. But I want you to have this revelation. I want you to be blessed. In Jesus' name right now, I pray for each one listening. I release this revelation that that, that woman needed that man of God, Elijah, the, the anointing to sow into, to receive what she needed for her and her son and household. And God, we bless them right now as they sow. Go there and make sure you take care of your local assembly. Take care of, just find some good ground and, and sow into, whether it's this or another, find some good ground and put it into. In Jesus' name, we bless you. We thank you, Lord. Amen. David Cardo, talk to you later.